Have you ever played chess? If you have, you would know it's a very complicated game. I mean, even if you take away all the pieces, that's still a 64 square board. That has a lot to keep track of. Chess could be a lot easier if we just cut the board in half. So we did. I present to you half chess. Now you only have to keep track of 32 squares. 1 through 8 vertically and A through D horizontally. Now, the pieces are going to be a little bit different for half chess, and by that, I mean there's half of them. And in order to have four pieces on the back rank with four pawns in front of them, we had to get rid of one of the pieces. And when you take away half of the squares, one piece stands out as being the worst, and that piece is the bishop. The bishop can't even go to as many squares as the king in half chess, and that's kind of an issue. Since the bishop in this scenario is pretty much just a glorified pawn, we took it out of the starting position. And that starting position looks a little bit like this. Now for the pieces on the back rank for white, you're going to have knight, queen, king, and then rook, followed by pawns in front of them. Now the pieces were laid out like this so that there were no pawns in front of the king that looked especially weak. All of those pawns have at least one defender besides the king himself. Now the pieces were also laid out like this so that the board didn't seem asymmetrical. For example, if the knight and rook were to be switched, then there would just be too much power going forward on the left side of the board. The first piece we have to discuss is the pawn. The pawn moves exactly the same as it does in normal chess. Starting the game, the pawn can move two squares or it can move one square, and then after that it can only move one square going forward. The pawn is also only able to attack diagonally. En passant also applies to half chess, which means that if your opponent's pawn moves two squares, and if it were to only have moved one square, you would have been able to capture it, then you can capture it anyways. The pawn's the most basic piece, so its value didn't change when the board was cut in half. The pawn used to be worth one point, and now it is still worth one point. The next piece we have to discuss is the knight, or as I like to call it, the horsey. The knight's movement got a little bit restricted in half chess. Now instead of being able to move anywhere it wants, some of its squares got taken away. The knight also finds itself in a little bit of trouble when it's trying to get off of its starting square. In half chess, there's only one spot that it can go to. Alternatively, you could push up a pawn and then move the knight, which does give it a little bit more breathing room, but it still suffers from its starting square. However, the knight is still really good in half chess, and arguably better than in normal chess, because of all the ways it can jump around the closed positions. Because of this reason, the knight is now worth 4 points, rather than the 3 points it normally is in regular chess. The next piece to discuss is the queen. The queen still moves normally, except for now some of its diagonal squares have been taken away. The queen suffers from the board being cut in half, just like the bishop does. Of course, the queen is still the best piece on the board. Like in this scenario. Can you see the checkmate in one? Good job if you found it. But which one did you find? There's actually a checkmate in one for white and black in this position, depending on whose turn it is. Here is the checkmate for white, and here is the checkmate for black. This just goes to show that the queen is still very powerful in half chess. In regular chess, the queen is worth 9 points, but in half chess, because of all the diagonal play that's been taken away, the queen is worth only 7 points. This is because, in my opinion, since the queen can't move very far diagonally, a knight and a rook are still better than the queen. The next piece we have to talk about is the rook. The rook moves up and down and left to right. Because half of the board has been taken away, that means the rook is much better in the vertical axis. The rook is also able to castle in half chess, even starting at move 1. This could lead to a lot of new openings and really interesting play with the rook. And I know you might be saying, well castling is kind of a king move, but I don't care. I don't care. You do have to be a little bit careful though about trapping your king in the corner like this because it can lead to some very strong attacks as you can see in this game. Now the goal for black here is that since you can see that that king is trapped, if you could get a rook onto that square in front of the king, then that's checkmate. 
as long as it's protected, of course. Now, the main issue with white's play here is just by putting your knight out onto its regular square, it naturally defends that square that is in front of the king. And by not bringing that knight out, white allowed themselves to be checkmated here. Now, the rook is still very strong in half chess. However, I would say it is just about as strong as it is in normal chess. It's very nice paired up with the queen, and there's a lot that you can do with it. And for that reason, we're still going to put it at five points. The final piece to discuss is the king. The king is almost exactly the same as normal chess, even in the strategies with it. It's very good at the end game, and it needs to be protected during the middle game. The rules of regular chess still apply to half chess concerning the king. When it's in check, you have to get out of check before you can make another move. And if the king is the last piece on the board, or none of your other pieces can move, if the king has no more moves left, it's stalemate meaning it's a tie and the game is over. Now, what would chess be without openings? And in half chess, there's a lot of common openings you might encounter. The first and most normal, most regular, most average opening you might find is the average Joe's opening. This opening consists of the very common move c4 followed by c5, and then the very natural movement of the knight out to b3. Now this attack of the black pawn can be responded to in a few ways, and the most common of these ways are going to be with pawns. The first way is the presidential defense, named after Joe Biden. This defense is very nice because it connects three of your pawns and it does it in a centralizing way. However, it does block off the natural development of your black knight, but there is another square for it to develop. It does block the queen a little bit, but it's still all right. Instead of responding to the average Joe's opening with b6 as black, you could also respond to it with d6. This is called the exotic defense, named after, you guessed it, Joe Exotic. This defense sidesteps the problem of the black knight being blocked from developing. However, it does push some pawns in front of your king and makes castling a not so appealing option. The other most common pawn opening you might find in half chess is the queen's opening, named after the queen's pawn, and only the queen's pawn, nothing else. Now the queen's pawn opening starts with b4 followed by b5, and then the two knights come out to b3 and then to b6. The benefit of this opening is that it's very safe for both sides, however it's going to be a very slow game. This next opening is called the popcorn defense and it's a little bit risky for black. The popcorn defense starts with c4, however it's followed by b5. The accepted variation of the popcorn defense is where the white pawn takes the black pawn, and then the black queen comes back out and takes the white pawn again. Now the popcorn defense rejected is where it gets a little bit trickier for black, because now since the white pawn has moved forward, their knight can't get out, and it just creates a lot of problems, and it's something you might want to avoid playing as black if you don't know how to equalize. The next opening is the banana defense. The banana defense is very similar to the Sicilian defense in normal chess, in that you fight for the center by not putting a pawn in the center. This helps black because if white just tries to bring their knight out like they would in the average Joe's opening, then black can just push their pawn forward and boot the knight out. In this sliced variation, if the knight just tries to come back and attack the pawn, then black can actually bring their queen out, protecting the pawn and attacking the white knight. The only good move for white here is to bring their knight back into the corner. This traps the knight and gives black a very dominant center. A good opening for white that opens up the board and leads to very interesting play is the center opening. This opening consists of c4 followed by c5 and then b4. This aims at either opening up the center or pushing a white pawn into the black position. An opening similar to the French defense in classical chess can be found in half chess in the form of the kangaroo defense. After white plays c4, instead of playing c5, black plays c6 setting up a pawn to challenge the one in the center. White normally will play b4 
and then black will play b5. White can push here, however if they take, there are two real options for black to take back. The first here is the joey attack, not to be confused with the average joe. The one problem with this is that it allows white to castle, putting the black king in check. This check cannot be blocked with the queen, otherwise you'll lose a queen for a rook. However, it can be blocked with the knight, but if the black king doesn't see this, and they instead move their king to the side, it can really benefit white. Another way to take this pawn back is the royal variation, in which the queen actually takes it and avoids the castling check. Last but not least, there is one opening move that is very new to half chess. This of course is castling on turn one. Now we've decided to call this the scared little baby's opening because you're a scared little baby if you hide on the first move. Your opponent of course can also do this and that's called the scared little baby's opening copycat baby variation. In this scenario both you and your opponent just need to be tucked into bed. It's nap time. But in all seriousness, this opening does allow you to push pawns into the center and have them be very protected. With that being said, half chess is truly mwah, a masterpiece of a game. If you want to play half chess, you can just cover one side of a chessboard in real life and play with some friends. Alternatively, in the future, I plan to make a video where I use ChatGPT to help me code half chess online, and I'll give you guys the link then. Anyone can play half chess. All you need is half a brain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that one. I'm, I'm sorry. Anyways, yeah, that's about it. Thank you.